Hi and welcome back to Cheeky Crypto. My name is Nick and today guys we are going to be jumping down into the world of Bitcoin, take a look at the most recent price section and what I would expect to happen next. Following on from yesterday we have seen some interesting volatility and some different structures appearing for Bitcoin so we're going to jump right down into it. As I get into the video if you do find it useful and informative smash a like button I do appreciate that. If you are new to the channel why not go ahead and subscribe and if you haven't joined us in Discord what are you waiting for check it out link is in the description down below. Let's jump right down into this one kicking things off with our one hour time frame so here we have a btc paired up with usdt uh, this is the bit get spot exchange on that one hour time frame following on from yesterday's video uh, we can see that we were expecting a move up towards twenty eight thousand and eleven dollars to twenty eight thousand eight hundred and seventy dollars this was a um, z wave structure okay as a part of a bigger play you can also see that we we're expecting a bit of a move down uh, we're talking about potentially testing um the kind of 50 EMAs and the 200 EMAs, as you can kind of see, we actually saw both. We saw the test around 8 a.m. Uh, yesterday, uh, done here on UK time, and then obviously pushed up into our Z wave expectations before pushing back down towards our 200 EMA. Now, what's interesting about this is our Z wave can be complete here, okay? It doesn't have to go up any higher. That has kind of met the minimum expectations on this one. Um, or alternatively, the most important thing is this internal structured move to the downside, right? And so we need to kind of consider that if we have finished that Z wave and we have started a five wave move, we've got a lot further to the downside to go before we might even think about a potential move upwards. So let's go down into a five minute chart. And what we're going to do is we're just going to review this drop that we saw here. OK, because we need to make sure that this particular pattern and structure makes sense internally so that we can build it up into the hourly chart. OK, so this particular move to the downside here has actually triggered um, some interesting thoughts. We've got a couple of fair value gaps that were left behind, according to smart money concepts. These gaps were institutional uh, players basically dumped on the market and left behind these gaps is it basically it creates an imbalance in the liquidity aspect for BTC uh, USDT pair now here we can see that we have a pretty sharp drop to the downside um, but internally up here on the five minute chart I can't see any rationale to think of this as more than a three wave move so it's not looking like it's five uh, a five wave structure internally there um, but we do see uh, potential in here uh, as a potential one two three four five coming into that point um, moving down a little bit deeper it's the question will comes does it hit those minimum thresholds under that kind of thinking and I'm not sure it does let me uh, let me check right here no, it doesn't. But it does go down deeper than 1.236, essentially meaning that it's actually more of a WXYXZ pattern than a five wave pattern. So let's come back up into our hourly chart here. Uh, so what I'm saying, guys, is that this here on the hourly chart looks like we can go one, two three, four, five, right? However, when we take a look at it from an internal standpoint, it doesn't have the correct workings on the internal counts to be considered that. So instead we'd have to go WX, Y, X, and Z, okay? So basically the differences between those two structures are that one is short-term corrective to the downside and the other one would be trend-based to the downside. And I think we are corrective to the downside. That means that as we still have the possibility here and the potential to push up further into that Z wave. Okay, so these are the important distinctions between trying to you know, ascertain which direction things are going in. Now, we do also note that we have a, another kind of, you know, W, X, Y, X, Z right inside here as well. Um, so quick correction to the downside and we can follow back up. Now, I think essentially it's probably better to think of this more as a three wave pattern rather than getting over complicated with those five wave structures. If we were to go ahead and take a look at this, I think we have the possibility of coming right up into the range right here. Uh, of course, a double top situation at 28,298 uh, to 28,000. 526 okay that's going to be the area and you can see that this would then create this little bit of an overlap inside here so let me go ahead and remove the fibs and you can see that that might be the move that we'll be looking for this will i'll just mark it up as an abc for now uh, we will give you the idea that that's kind of where we head okay now 
that would potentially be one scenario that could unplay, uh, could play here out here, right? And the other thing we have to kind of consider is the momentum, okay? So momentum on the hourly chart isn't going to be overly too supportive of this structure. We can see that we are potentially pushing back down just a fraction uh, before we rally on up. So we'll keep a close eye on that. Uh, I think for the most part, though, the one hour chart is looking okay. The four hour is okay as well. Uh, we are right inside a fair value gap on the four hour, eight hours in an oversold area. So I think we've got momentum to support on the four and eight hour charts. And um, the hourly just expect a little bit of volatility. Don't expect a straight line up into this range uh, between kind of 28,200 and 28,500. Obviously, bear in mind, I'm not a financial advisor. I cannot give you financial advice. All I can do is share my thoughts and opinions on the data in the charts as I personally see it. Let's take this up into the daily time frame. Okay, on the daily time frame, we are still in side, in my opinion, the fifth wave movement because it has not been broken yet. Okay, so our structure here is very much a bearish one until proven otherwise. This essentially means we have to rally up higher than $28,588. If we fail to do this, then unfortunately, yeah, we are still bearish and we still have this move to the downside between twenty two dollars and $23,000. Um, so if we want to be bullish on Bitcoin, we have to break above $28,588. And I think that is the possibility of retesting those highs and we might get lucky enough to break out of the structure here from an Elliott Wave theory point of view. Um, and we are still in a bullish structure on the smart money concepts on the daily time frame as well. Momentum, however, doesn't necessarily support the idea of much more uh, to the upside. There is actually a little bit more of a momentum shift to the downside potentially here on the card. So we want to be aware that essentially we can rally down in our bearish Elliott Way theory structure. Um, and of course, you know, if that is to, to play out, then of course we are long term bearish because it does mean that we are likely to see a bit of a relief rally maybe, but uh, ultimately further downside, totally testing out that $20,000 level. And even if we do break above 28000 1588 yes it would break this particular structure here but i do see a uh, potential bearish situation emerging uh, further down the line and again it would be several months out uh, and would be something that maybe we could enjoy some gains and some green market for a little while but essentially would mean that still twenty thousand dollar btc unless that gets broken uh, at least a structure towards that gets broken we are still heading down in that direction and um, so we want to be a little bit cautious although we can enjoy some pretty decent trades in long positions if we wanted to. Um, but for now, the main takeaway from the daily chart is that we are are still bearish. We have not yet broken the 28,588. And so until we do, uh, the default position is 22 to $23,000 is the target. Okay, but we are aware that we are close to and we do have the potential to break out of that structure. And Smart Money Concepts still thinks that we are in the bullish pattern. Um, so take it up into a weekly time frame. And what am I really talking about here from a weekly standpoint? Well, this is where I see a little bit more concern for the longer term. Um, so what do we see? Well, we can see, if I just grab the stochastic RSI down here, right, and I draw a trend line into there, you can see that we kind of have the potential here to get rejected from this trend line on the stochastic RSI. This trend line on the stochastic RSI means that it's limited upside. This limited upside from our candlestick point of view and from the price action also happens to come in and coincide with our resistance or previous area of supply. Okay, so if we think about smart money concepts, we know that there's uh, essentially demand areas and supply areas. Our current supply area comes in at 28,600 to 32,289. Okay, so not only do we see this downward trend on the stochastic RSI, where we potentially are going to be coming into our upper area of resistance on the momentum momentum indicator, we're also hitting the resistance in terms of where the supply enters the market. And there's lots of sellers between 28,000 and 32,000. We've been rejected a couple of times in this range already. And chances are that we may actually get rejected from this range once again. So I am a little bit concerned here. Now, of course, we are a few weeks out from a potential golden cross. And you guys know how I feel about these things. Uh, essentially, these things only show you what's already happened. And although there might be some short term positivity, as people believe that these things are catalysts for major moves in the market. Essentially, it is just showing you what's already happened. And these things can be utilized for short-term trading opportunities for sure.
before. So a golden cross essentially would mean a push upwards in price. What doesn't tell us is whether or not we are likely to move on down before we get that rally on up. OK, so for example, we could see here that there was a death cross uh, that happened on the 13th of February on this weekly time frame. OK, with a short term price action dropping down longer, uh, lower than the longer term price action. And we did see a dip in price, but we rallied right up much, much, much stronger. Right. And so although here we may see a small move upwards, we still might find a big significant drop after. OK, because we are facing this area of resistance. And my expectations are that we are not likely to pierce above thirty two thousand uh, dollar Bitcoin. So we have to be a little bit cautious here with understanding, OK, the previous area of support has turned into resistance. And if this uh, maintains the resistance, which appears to be doing so, then unfortunately, the next areas of major kind of support to be found are going to be heading down towards that twenty two thousand dollar level. And all the way down to the $20,000 CME gap as well. OK, this also will coincide with our trend line that we have curved on here as well. And um, so it will be interesting to see how price reacts to this level. I suspect, though, that this curved trend line that I have drawn on uh, drawn on here um, will essentially get broken if uh, if Bitcoin gets rejected at $20,000 and will probably more than likely mean a new bear market low for Bitcoin if that were the case. So we want to be really cautious. I think there's some possibility of some moves to the upside in this kind of bear market market rally that we're experiencing. I think October essentially will be a bit of a green month. But long term, I am still nervous until we kind of break through some of these major areas of resistance. And of course, the wider economic climate starts to improve, which at the moment I am not seeing it as such. So for, for now, I think the bull market is coming. It is something that we need to be prepared for, but it's just not here yet. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below, but I'm going to wrap this video up right there. If you have found it useful and informative, smash that like button. I do appreciate that. If you are new to the channel, then why not go ahead and subscribe, tap the bell, select all the notifications. And in doing so, you will be kept up to date with everything that we do here at Cheeky Crypto. Until the next one, though, guys, have a fantastic day.